about this? Uh, what's, who's this guy? This guy comes off the bench. What, what, what is that? How does he do that? You've never seen that before. Because most teams had five guys and then the scrubs. Okay? You got the starters and scrubs. But I was just as good as the starters. There's six, there six of us instead of five. So I was the odd man out. Ten minutes goes by, get in the game, and the level of play doesn't drop. In fact, sometimes it got better because I had a chance to watch what was going on and say, boy, if I was in there, I'd do this. Whereas they're in the game, they can't see as much as I can from the bench. Okay? So I took that as a, a, a learning chance to be ready. Now, you've got to know that Bobby Knight's a very disciplined guy. And, and I've seen him tell guys, get in the game. And they're taking off their warm-up and they're undoing their pants. Didn't have the rip pants. You had to pull them down, you know. And I knew every game I was going to go in right away. So after warm-ups, Stars would take their pants off and their shirt and they'd get in the warm up. Well, I'd take my pants off too. And I'd lay them on top of my leg. So from the stands, it looked like I had my warm ups on, but I didn't have them on. And he'd say, Get in there. I'd go, I'm in the game. So he never could say, well, You're not ready to play. You're not going in. So all three years, I had those pants just laying on my legs, knowing I was going to get in. And so the Sports Illustrated guy said, man, this is unbelievable. This guy comes in. And so he put Super Sub on there, and that's how I got on the cover. Because I wasn't the best player on the team. I was the most unusual player on the team. And that's what got me the, the notoriety. So that's a good question. Thank you. Yes, sir. So what was your overall college experience as a student? So Coach and I always wanted players to get their degree. And I remember my high school coach, uh, he helped me in the coaching decision, the school decision. And there were six, there were seven schools I visited. Six were mid-majors. Butler before they were Butler. Uh, University of Indianapolis, Indiana State, Western Michigan. You know, just good schools. And my coach told me I was going to play. Uh, but in Indiana, you may not play. I mean, this is the Big Ten. No the Big Ten schools called for you. And they got really good all-star all players, and you're, you're good, but you're not great. You know? He said, would you go to Indiana even if you never got to play? Practice all day, three years, never get in the game. And I'd been to the business school. I knew I wanted to be a business major, and I saw how good that was, and I said, even if I don't get to play, I would go because of the state school and the business school they have. Well, it ended up I did get to play, so it was the best of both worlds. So that's that's how Ben said, give me that education, and I'll see how far it takes me. And look at this, I own a restaurant. Yes, sir. So what did Coach Knight see in you that other big kids schools didn't? Um, you know, uh, I averaged 29 points a game in senior high school. That's pretty good. And I was second team All-State, sixth leading scorer in the state of Indiana. So I had a lot of good things. I was a late bloomer. I was a little skinny, 6'5", about 170 pounds, 75 pounds, and they'd all looked at other guys. And when Coach Knight got the job that year, he was starting from scratch. He didn't know anybody in the state. A lot of the guys already made up their mind where they're going to go, and uh, I hadn't made up my mind yet. So I was one of the last guys. I visited the campus the weekend after Little 500, which if you guys will learn if you come here, it's like way late. And I signed my letter on June 10th to come to Indiana. The guys signed now in their sophomore, junior year, you know. Um, and then I show up in July for orientation, and August classes started. There you are. And who knew what it was going to be? And all of a sudden, things took off. Yes. Are there any, like, values or skills that you learned when you were on the basketball team that you still use today in your business? So there is. So discipline. You know, he, he was very demanding. This is how we're going to do it. And I don't want you to deviate from this. So Culver's has an operations manual. It's online. It lists everything you need to do. Here's how you make a great burger. Here's how you make a great shake. Here's how you treat your guests. Here's how you do this. I mean, it's, it's you. Okay? And we follow that. Word by word, this is the way we're going to do it. Okay? Because it's already been proven 700 times before. Why are we trying to do it different? And that's the value of franchises. They've already shown you how to do it. You just have to follow it. So I followed exactly what Knight said to do. It got me through college. It got me to the NBA. And now I'm following the Culver's operations manual to get me where I want to go. And we don't deviate from that. So, uh, be on time. Treat people nice. Uh, be ready to work. Don't, don't, uh, don't worry about your teammate. He's doing the best job he can. So don't 
Don't worry about the cashier. Don't worry about the person bringing the food out. They're doing the best they can. You know, we're all in this thing together, and that's how I make this work. So we have uh, evaluations that come by. A guy from Culver's comes down and evaluates our restaurant. How are you doing? Are you meeting our standards? Are you doing it the way we're supposed to do? He was here last uh, Thursday. He was here on Thursday. Um, best score is 100. Okay? We got a 97. 97 out of 100. Unheard of for a first store interview or evaluation to get one. And we did. So we were very pleased with that. That's what got us a chance to look for another one. Yes? So, yeah, that's that's good because you guys are all in different areas, different backgrounds, so where am I going to end up? Um, Indiana has an alumni camp in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. It's uh, a little north of Milwaukee, a little bitty town. It's on a lake, and the alumni go there every summer, and they have a camp that they go to, summer camp. Boating, fishing, uh, campfires, and all that stuff. And the, the, the hyper kids, school, school of hyper, are not hyper. What's it called now? Public health. Public health. School of public health are the counselors. So I have kids with the counselors. And the counselors come in with their kids, and so they were looking for um, uh, staff members to come up to talk to the adults. Uh, and then do a basketball clinic, and so they took me, and I went up there and did it. I've never been there before, you know. And on Friday, Friday's my golf day, so I was driving to Sheboygan, where there's a nice golf course in Wisconsin. I'm driving down the road, and I get there, and butter burgers and frozen custard. Thought, hey, that looks pretty good. Never heard that before. So I whip in there, you know, and like you guys, man, first time, our man from New Jersey. This is really good, man. I love this stuff. And so uh, that's how I found it. That was in 1996. And ever since I've stopped in Wisconsin or Michigan or Illinois, they finally got to Indiana. I stopped in Indiana. You get the good food, you know. And, and then finally in 2014, I, I looked into owning one and we just opened in November. So I finally wrote that. Yes. So it wasn't obviously a goal of mine because I'm just, you know, a guy coming off the bench. That's not something you think about. And uh, I woke up for breakfast one morning. I was at the attorney house. And one of the guys said, hey, have you seen Sports Illustrated yet? I said, no. And he holds it up. He bought it. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's me. So that's how I found out about it. And so, you know, what? I went to class and I had, had a half hour for practice. I thought, well, I got to go to the drugstore. I got to see if this is really right. I didn't want to stand right in front of the magazine counter because then they'd say, oh, so I had to stand aisle back. I said, it is. It's for sale. You can buy one. 75 cents. I think it's like four bucks now. Uh, so I got to practice that day. And Coach Knight didn't like the article. The guy, he didn't think he wrote a good article. We're excited as heck to be on there. But he's not very happy. And I wasn't doing so good that day, you know. And of course, he stops practice. He said, Hey, I've seen enough out of you. He said, You get your picture on the cover of that damn magazine, don't think you have to work anymore. Now get out there and start working. In true night fashion. It was just not a message just to me, but to the whole team. Like, I don't care if you guys are number one. Let's get going, or the next guy's going to beat us. And nobody beat us until the very last game of the year. So it, it worked. So it was, it was great, but it was tough to bear <laughs> because uh, he didn't think it was a good, good argument. Yes? So uh, that, is, that is different, uh, but the concepts are the same, kind of things I talked about before. And then the TV thing was a really easy transition because you're still part in it. I got to see all the guys from Isaiah Thomas all the way to Damon Bailey. And, even to Dane Five and Jared Jeffries, all those guys. So it was a nice little transition because I was still involved. And then that helped my business career because people knew me from TV and make a sales call. But really, this is where I finally met my niche. You know, this is, this is a totally different field. I've never done it before. But as, as you just heard, it's been very successful. And um, because of the background that I come from. Yes, sir. We think your time announcing is all too 